It sounds like a completely different banjo. <laughs> Hey everybody, my name is Mark. Welcome back to 2000 Hours of Banjo. Probably the best setback I've had so far. Uh, also frustrating as well. I had to change something, something that my instructor spotted uh, the other week and I had to change my right hand position and it really has changed the sound of this banjo for the better. If you will just um, humor me for a bit and <laughs> try closing your eyes. Now, I don't know if my microphones are all set up properly because now this is playing so much louder or I'm playing it so much louder, but close your eyes for a bit. I'm going to play something and then I'm going to play it again two different ways. So let's see if I can do it uh, the first way. Keep those eyes closed, playing it the other way. All right, you can open your eyes. Hopefully the microphones picked up the difference in the sound and picked up my mistakes, which is part of the frustration of what's going on, even though I really appreciate this setback. Now, what is going on is with my right hand. And what was happening was, um, if, if you go back and you look at my video, uh, why do I lie to my uh, instructor? And I'll, I'll put a link in the description below. One of the things that I was lying about to my instructor was, playing loud, playing with lots of tone. And I didn't like doing it because I'm in the house and my wife is working from home. And it's a lot of playing. I practice an hour to an hour and a half a day and it's a lot of loud noises and bless her for putting up with that sound. And that's me playing quietly. I don't like to play super loud. As soon as I started practicing loud, as soon as I released my concerns and was honest with my instructor and he said you have to play loud and I started playing loud he noticed an issue right away and that is again with my left hand and what was happening is I was dropping my hand too low my wrist and my arm too low and when I was picking the string I was actually sliding the pick a little bit along the string before springing off of it and I like, that's that's a problem. You got to fix that. And the solution is to get my, my wrist up, prop it up. So my fingers are now more, and the picks themselves are more perpendicular to the strings. And it, it, they leap off the string so much better. It's kind of the difference between, if you remember having a springboard at a pool, it's like the difference between walking off a springboard and then doing that little hop bounce off the end of the springboard. That's, to me, that's mentally how I can convert it to <laughs> kind of verbiage so that you can understand the difference of, of how the strings are now cracking off or how the picks are cracking off the strings. And what's interesting, now I use um, Ernie Ball picky picks when I look at the pick really closely, I can see that this inside curve is all smoothed out. It's been polished from riding against that string uh, before, it, before it comes off of it. And that's, that's bad. Now, it's great, and I am... Oh my gosh, this... this... It just, it just sounds so much better. I, I, I'm in love with it. It's... Whoops. But what you're... 
you're hearing also is a ton of mistakes. My, my, my right hand, my fingers are catching other strings. The, the tip of the pick is catching underneath the string and it's trying to pull or rip the, the pick right off my finger. So here I go again, right? I'm, <laughs> I, I'm in the position where I have to relearn to play all my songs again. And this is a total bummer and it's incredibly frustrating. And I'm, and I'm apparently this is normal <laughs> or maybe it's not. My instructor says it's normal. So, or maybe he's just lying to me now and trying to comfort me from having to basically start over again. I feel like I'm learning all these songs that I've learned a hundred times over. I'm learning how to play it. I'm learning the strings and I'm learning the fretting. Then I stand up and I got to learn it again. Then I play outside, then I got to learn it again. Then I'm facing the sun, I got to learn it again. It's hot, I got to learn it again. It's cold, I got to learn it again. I injure my finger, I've got to learn it again. I stop playing for a couple months, I got to learn it again. And now I have to relearn my right hand. Now, what sucks is that I've been taking my right hand for granted on a lot of these songs. I don't really focus on it. It kind of does its thing. It's, it's very weird. This is, this is something, this is that muscle memory and boy, is it strange, but I don't even think about the right hand. It just does its thing. So I can focus on my left hand and make sure I'm fretting properly. But now I have to think about the right hand because it's positioned differently. Even just a, a millimeter or two off is throwing the picking off on my right hand. And now, I'm focusing on the right hand and the left hand and I'm making a ton of mistakes. So guess what I got to do again? I got to slow things down, bring it all down. I've been doing so good working so close and trying to get faster and faster. I have to stop. I have to slow down. I have to relearn my right hand for all my songs to get that down so I can forget about it and take my right hand for granted again then work back up on the speed, but now with nice, good, clean picking instead of that, that, that dragging that I've been doing and gotten accustomed to. And I noticed that when I practice, when I'm, I'm doing my practice, that the arm starts to drift down and I start sliding the picks again and I have to catch myself and pull it back up. As long as I keep catching myself, as long as I keep pulling it back up, eventually I won't be dropping it and I'll keep it, be keeping it in the upright, nice, nice perpendicular position, and I'll just feel so much better and sound so much better. Uh, it's particularly noticeable in uh, Will the Circle Be Unbroken? Oh, and also, like my my pull-offs, they just sound poppier. My hammer-ons sound more significant. And, and it's just, I guess it's the power that's getting to the string uh, that's causing the, the hammer-ons and the pull-offs and the slides to just sound so much better. So again, this is, this is a great setback, but a setback nonetheless. So if, if you're new like me, if you're going through the learning process of learning a new instrument, man, I tell you, the first year they say that only 10% of people that say pick up a guitar um, actually continue playing it after the first year. The second year has been rough. It, I, again, I haven't learned many new songs. I feel like I'm suffering a lot of setbacks, but my understanding is that these are necessary setbacks. I'm still learning how to play this instrument, how to get good sound out of it not just learning songs, but learning how to actually utilize and get the most out of this instrument. And I gotta tell you, I'm a little happy that my ear can pick up the significant difference. Hopefully the microphones can do it some justice, but my ears can pick up the difference. And my instructor says, that's a really good thing that my ears are noticing the quality of the sound coming off of the banjo has improved when I improve my hand position and my picking on the actual instrument. So that's good, that's a positive. But still, it is a setback. And again, I have to learn Boil Them Cabbage Down again, Cripple Creek again, Cumberland Gap, all the songs, got to relearn them. And then we'll move forward again. I wish I could just say I'm giving you new songs, but that's not going to happen. 
back to the drawing board on a lot of these songs. Okay, some other things. Um, I have, <laughs> I have this, I bought these. Okay, this, these are just mini whiteboards. I'm using them for a couple of reasons. One, I'm using them for cue cards behind the camera so I know what the heck I'm talking about. But also, these are cue cards to help me remember what I should be focusing on for the week. I meet my instructor on Thursday. He, we go through our, our lesson. He tells me, okay, focus on these things for the next week. And typically, I've been using like this, this college log book um, to, to keep my notes and stuff like that. But what ends up happening is I, I write it down and then I put it down and then I don't pick it up again. And it's not on the top of my mind when I'm practicing what the things I'm supposed to be focusing on are. So that's what the whole point of this is. With this, I can keep it on my music stand. It's right there, constantly reminding me exactly what I need to be focusing on. Come next lesson, wipe it off, put the new stuff that I need to focus on, and I'm good to go for that week, focusing on the right stuff for the following week. I'm gonna take my picks off because I don't think I'm gonna play anymore uh, for today. If I do, I'll just throw them back on. The next thing that I'm, I've, I've worked on is I've reorganized my binder. One of the things that I've noticed, especially when I'm trying to learn a song, now I, when I learn a song and I've got it memorized, I close the binder and I don't really look at the tablature anymore. However, when I'm learning a song, what I've been doing is I've been printing out the tab, stapling it in the corner, throwing it into the binder. And I thought that was good, but it could be better. What ends up happening is I have to get to the bottom of the page, I have to flip the page, and then I have to use these little, these little props to try to hold it up. Sometimes the, the staple rips out and it's, it's awkward because if I need to go back, I gotta flip back and, and so forth. And so what I decided to do was, A, I bought dividers, um, and then I bought page protectors. And then what I did was, for songs, let me get that out of the way, I put them in on opposing sides of the page. So um, the first two pages, I don't have to flip a page. I could just read down the page. Once it gets to the bottom page, I can pick up the song right there and move on. By the time I get to the bottom of the second page of a song, it, it's pretty much repeating other parts of the song. So it's not as necessary for me to make sure that the end of this page is visible with the following page if it goes on to page three that is most of them do not for the, at least the fiddle tunes that i'm working on but this is really nice having it set up like this so i don't have to keep flipping pages also i'm not tearing any staples out i mean it got so bad that i i had to reprint these because they were so tattered in the corners and it was it was driving my my uh, obsessive compulsive disorder just like crazy it's just like ah it's too messy so I've done that, and then I have a divider for each different type of song for now. Obviously, at some point, I'll have to get a bigger binder or other binders and so forth. But this, I think this is going to work pretty good for now. So that's the system I'm working with. Um, these whiteboards, I can go ahead. I'll put a link in the description of below. I just got them on Amazon. They're pretty cheap. I think they're like five bucks a piece or something like that. And then I got some, um, uh, some whiteboard markers, the... Uh, odorless kind that's unfortunate right we all like to sniff our markers anyway so that's that uh <laughs> page protectors and dividers the dividers are actually pretty cool so you can write on them and wipe them off they're, they're plastic and a little bit more durable i'll throw these also in the description below so you can if you want to use these you can page protectors you can find anywhere i'm, <laughs> I'm not gonna put that in the description anyway so that's just about everything and then one more nugget, actually, that I learned. Okay, first of all, I want to apologize. Uh, it's been a bit since I did a last video. I think the last video I did was at 510 hours. Yeah, 510 hours. We're at now 530 hours. So it's been 20 hours since the last time I did a video. I apologize. My lab is in audit week. We got the big external audit. So I've been prepping for the audit. We're doing the audit now. Um, and that's taken a lot of time. I've been getting practices in 
Um, but I just haven't had the time to do a video until today. So doing a video today, I apologize for the lack of videos over the past few weeks. One of the interesting things at work that I found out, now I have staff and I hired this woman a couple years ago and she's a really good scientist. She's a, an amazing scientist. I found out today for the first time, she's been working for me for a couple of years now. I found out for the first time just last week that she knows how to play the fiddle and that she used to play bluegrass. So, but she hasn't played in like 10 years and the fiddle's got a lot of dust on it. I'm encouraging her to, and this might be on her evaluation, her annual appraisal, if she doesn't do it. I'm talking to you, Megan, if you're watching, I'm talking to you. She needs to get that fiddle out. She needs to dust it off. She needs to get going on it and learn some new, uh, learn the, her old fiddle tunes again, her old bluegrass tunes again. And we need to start jamming. I think that would be awesome. I would, I'm going to encourage her to do that. If she does, we can start jamming together. We can start, I can tell you the whole experience of how to jam. It, it'll be great. Cause like honestly the nervousness of walking into just a complete strange jam session, not knowing how to play with other people is, is terrifying. Having a coworker, actually not a coworker, Having one of the people I supervise that I can, I can tell them they need to play bluegrass and they need to jam with me. That's awesome. That's that is jam on demand. Anyway, keep your fingers crossed that Megan pulls through and, and dusts off her, her fiddle and starts playing bluegrass again. I've got some practice to do. I will see you next time. Bye.